So good evening, uh, friends. Here we are again. I'm Reverend Jeff Jones, the pastor of World Victory Church and Life Center. And we are doing our 40 days of renewal. We are in this consecration period where we've been covering a number of Psalms. And I think this is day 21. Uh, we're, we're, I think we're halfway through. Today, we're looking at, again, Psalm 53, two days ago, or yesterday, we did the opening. We covered verses one and two. And now we're going to do a deeper dive. Uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to do a little something different on the screen today. If I did this right, you're going to have to send me a comment and let me know if I got it right. I have my picture inset uh, from some Bible study questions that I have. So if you're watching this and you put it on pause, you can see some good questions that will help you if you're reviewing this scripture yourself. So hopefully that's working right because I can't really see what you're seeing. But hey, we're going to go for it. I know you can see me and I know you can see the paper. So let's just go for it. So let me uh, break you in again, World Victory Church and Life Center. The purpose of World Victory Church and Life Center is to help people meet God through Jesus Christ, who will meet their needs at every age and stage of life. So we have to make sure that we are engaged in worship for God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We have to make sure that we our fellowshipping together, that we're getting together, that we're involved in each other's lives, that we're giving as we have need, that we're really connected. You know, throughout this two and a half, almost two years and two month period with COVID, the ability to fellowship has really been attacked. But we're back in fellowship, not just in the church, but through uh, Zoom and your fellowshipping and your family. So let's keep that going. We know that we must focus on discipleship. And this is what we're doing here by having a verse by verse look at scripture, how to make this scripture come alive in your spirit, make the words leap off the page. For that's what we're supposed to do. We have to be involved in ministry, going out and helping people, right? Where they have need as God has blessed us, we continue to bless others. And then we have to have an evangelism or outreach effort, which is part of what we're doing here. So that's what we're doing at World Victory Church and Life Center. Let's jump back in to Psalm 53. We're going to look at verses three and four today. So in verses three and four, we actually could look at three, four, and five, but we'll just stop at three and four. In verses three and four, the point that's being made here is that God discovers that all men are godless. So back in this period, when the writer was writing this, God made a revelation. If you look at verse three, but let me go to verse two to kind of give you the bridge. In verse two, the scripture says, God looks down from heaven on the children of man. Those were the Gentiles we mentioned to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. Now in verse three, they have fallen away. Together they have become corrupt and there is none who does good, not even one. They have become corrupt and none has done good, not even one. Well, this corruptness that you see, or filthiness as the King James Version describes it, is really the result of forsaking God. When you, and when God is absent for your life, that void is going to be filled by something, right? Could be corruption, could be greed, could be felt, filth, could be additional sin, but to be without God leaves a void that's going to be filled because we are people who don't walk around voidless. I mean, with voids, we fill voids. So understanding that uh, not being with God, not focusing on God can leave you in a corrupt state of mind. You follow me? And then as you move in, um, the verse says, there's none that doeth good, none. In the, in the um, English translation, one of the English translations, it says, there's none who does good, not even one. And this is talking about none of that group who fell away from God, none of the people in that group who were no longer doing what God wanted them to do, none of them were doing good. They, they ran away from God. They, they strayed from God. They didn't follow his commands. And therefore, God is clearly pointing out to them as this writer is interpreting, God is pointing out to them, if they've fallen away, they're not doing any good. So the question for you is, when you have fallen away and some Many of us fall away for some time. And I don't mean not going to church. Some of us fall away because we're disappointed with, with something God has done or didn't do. And we kind of fall away. In those moments where you fell away, if you were one of them, 
what happened in your life after you fell away? Was everything rosy? Was everything a bed of roses? Was everything going the way you want, wanted it to go? Or were you starting to slip? Were you seeing negative changes in your life once you kind of fell away from God? The point is we all can struggle with God and we can all fall away for a minute, but you've got to hunger and thirst for God to get back to him. Go search for him. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, if you know what I mean. So in verse four, in verse four, God says, have those who work evil no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon God? So what he's talking about here is there is an attempt to destroy God's people by these evildoers, by these ones who fell away. I fell away. I'm in the house with God. Therefore, you're going to be in the, on the house with God. I fell away. I'm not following God. I'm coming to get you, right? There's this attack, right? But what we have to realize here when he talks about knowledge, the true knowledge is the true understanding of the fear of the Lord which is what brings wisdom. If you fear the Lord, and again, we're not talking about that, ooh, I gotta run fear. It's this healthy, fearful respect. If you fear the Lord, that will cause you to seek the wisdom of the Lord, which will drive you right back to the scriptures, right? Which when you look at what we're doing, we're examining how to read these scriptures and what they might mean to us. In verse four, also in verse four, talks about have those who work evil, have those who work evil, no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread, who eat up my people as they eat bread. This is just another way of saying destruction, right? These folks are seeking to destroy the ones who fell away from God. And those who do not, do not call upon God, it's the same people. It is prayerless people. Prayerless people in this particular text, right? Prayerless people leads to um, I want to say like a soil of sin and destruction. Without prayer, without communion with God, without talking to God, whether you believe God answers you or not, without talking to God, without praying to God, it can leave you in a bad place. And so this Psalm in, in verses three and four is trying to paint this picture of, look, no one is good, right? All men are godless. I'm going to point that out so that you can include yourself. This is the writer. And so that when we come back in five, six, and seven, we can, I mean, five and six, we can see how this picture closes up. Some of the things I want you to contemplate as you're looking at this outline, there's some good questions here um, as you're going through the entire text, right? So, so screenshot this or put it on pause, right? So look at, uh, there's a question for three. What, what will God find when he, judges mankind. He's going to find some people that have fallen away, that have become corrupt, that are seeking to destroy his people. That's what he's going to find. You just don't want to be one of them, right? Or there's a question here for verse four. How are God's people affected by the wicked? Well, the wicked are coming to get the good. So God's people are negatively affected by the wicked. So it's in our best interest to stay with God, to hang with God, to stick in there with God, but also to spread his gospel so that some of those who are wicked might hear the good news and move from the wicked to the good. That's how we protect ourselves. So these are some questions that you can use to explore the text, right? There are questions that you can use to see if you really get it, right? If you get it, the, the points that are being made. Um, Asking yourself, what does God desire from you? Or what priorities does God want us to have? All of this can be gleaned or pulled from this text. So hopefully this worked out. We'll see today after I post it. Give me some comments though to let me know if you could see it, uh, how that worked, maybe the screen size. I wanna make sure that I'm providing some uh, value to what you're doing. So again, that was Psalm 53 verses three through four. Tomorrow we're gonna, we're gonna close it out with five and six. Go back to yesterday's lesson, piece this together, work it out. You got to work this out. Sometimes you got to wrestle with the text. Okay, so here's what I need you to do. I'm always going to tell you what we need you to do. We need you to like. We need you to subscribe. If you're in YouTube, we want to see the number of subscribers go up. That means there are more people 
who are getting regular updates on how to read and study the Bible, right? Go ahead and click the notify bell in, link in YouTube so you can be notified when we post. And Facebook, go ahead and do a like, share and comment so we can spread the good news. All right, that's Psalm 53. I'm Reverend Jeff Jones, pastor of World Victory Church and Life Center. We leave with the same blessing, the same benediction every time we leave each other. And in the words of Jesus, you in this world, you shall have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Go in peace, have a lovely rest of the evening. Remember God loves you so very much. And so do we, amen, 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 amen.